the first thing that I wanted to talk to you and, and get our viewers to know is to learn a little bit about you and what you do with CPA Associates. We've been in practice 29 years, Lipton CPA Associates. We're a full service CPA firm. We deal with tax, accounting, consulting, and forensic accounting. Now, you know, more than ever, tax planning is crucial. There's so many tax law changes. This is unprecedented. We've never seen in our career this many tax law changes in this short of a time. Now with everything going on, we're getting changes every day and they're getting implemented immediately. So we're, we're working around the clock to put these things in. Okay. Uh, we're talking with Richard Lipton of Richard Lipton CPA and Associates. And Richard, uh, I'm kind of curious if you could tell us a little bit about what a forensic CPA does. A forensic CPA, the certification CFF, Certified in Financial Forensics, it's a specialty designation only given by the American Institute of CPAs to select CPAs. Accountants are trained to look at numbers. Mm -hmm. Forensic accountants are trained to look behind the numbers. And we have a lot of additional training, a lot of additional experience, interview training, fraud experience. We put all these things together, even for good time situations. And we use this knowledge, not only to look at financial numbers that a client gives us, say, okay, this is good. We can put this in a tax return. And maybe, you know, you have a couple other deductions along with it. But the forensics gives us the added skill of talking to the client and getting them to open up and telling us things that they didn't expect to tell us. We actually have a modern office that we answer the questions you didn't know you needed to ask. Although forensic accounting traditionally is known for fraud investigations, business purchases, like if somebody's buying a business or investing in a business, mm -hmm. whether it's crowdfunding or something of that nature, they'll call us in to do due diligence on something to make sure it's really what they're thinking it is with the primary concern on the, you know, the CARES Act and the stimulus and basic business survival. You know, our clients are coming to us and saying, what do we do? We're using that, we're talking to them, we're getting them to open up, and sometimes they can answer their own questions, they'll wind up answering their own questions. So what are you advising them to do during this time to, pro to protect their interests? First thing we're advising them to do and getting them to do is letting them talk, vent out their problems, and try to take the emotion out of it. And let them realize they're not the only ones in there, and the goal is to survive the business. And we have to take a long-term approach to this. It's not just a matter of meeting next week's payroll or, you know, saying, wow, this is the greatest opportunity to cut expenses. What we're trying to get our clients to do is look at this from a long-term approach. When you drive down the street and you look at a lot of businesses that are closed right now, the first thing that goes through your mind is, will they ever survive? Will they ever come back? Do I have to look for another dry cleaner? Do I have to not look for another restaurant or another hairstylist or whatever the business might be? It may even be your auto dealership. Do I have to look for another auto dealership? So one of the things we're advising our clients, because the first thing people do, we went through this with the 08 recession, is they say, I have to cut costs. And they'll say, I want to cut my labor costs. And I'm going to have three people in this department. I'm going to cut it down to one. And they'll say, well, that one person will work three times as hard. You know, they're not going to risk losing their job. Well, they're not going to risk losing their job. But the risk is that there's no checks and balances there of somebody watching over the other. And you also have a disgruntled employee who can't leave. Right. Sometimes that person might look for their own source of raising their own money in the companies if they have access to funds. You know, we're not accusing anybody in particular, but another expression we go by is when you dim the lights, don't shut them. What that really means is you can trim some of your expenses in business. And those are the things that we go through with the client because if we look at it independently, we're going to take the emotion out of it. Mm -hmm. And when we look at it, we're going to say, okay, well, this is an area of expense you probably shouldn't have had anyway. Even when times were good, you probably didn't care. You had a big company, you had all these overhead, you didn't mind. Now that business is bad, you're going to take a look at it and realize, wait, this is something I don't need. So, we're guiding our clients to trim where they should have anyway to survive this. Fortunately, we have this stimulus package, which is out there now, which we did not have in the 08 recession come out as quick. So that 
is to get people through the short term. And there's some other stimulus packages being talked about that aren't out there yet. They help survive, get businesses through the rest of it. And then when things reopen, we want our clients to be the survivor out there and be stronger than their competition who thought they could cut costs everywhere. Rich, are any of your clients asking you what is the best thing that they should do with that stimulus money, whether it's 1200 or 2400 Yes. We're getting a lot of questions on it. The most questions we're actually getting is on what they call the PPP program, which is the payroll protection program. Mm -hmm because that's the one with businesses. And we're getting a lot of questions on that one, how to apply for it, what's included with it, and how to use the money, because that money's coming through as a loan, and it's not necessarily forgiven. That It's coming through as a loan that has to be repaid. It's up to the business owner to utilize those funds in certain ways that it can then be forgiven. Okay. And if they don't use it correctly, they're going to have to pay it back with the nominal interest rate. So that's really where most of the questions are coming from and which of the stimulus packages to use and which is best for them. Because sometimes if you use one, that will preclude a business owner from using another one. The last question for me, Rich, is in terms of investors, uh, these are unprecedented times, we've talked about that. What advice do you give to people looking to invest that money right now? Well, a couple things. One is, for people looking to invest, now may be a good time. Because as you know, the markets are down. For publicly held companies, for smaller privately held companies, they're going to have a difficult time borrowing and a difficult time raising cash from people. They may have to lower their um, price, their buy-in prices. So if somebody has cash, it could be a great opportunity to buy into a small company that needs it. I think coming out of this, it's going to be a good opportunity for business startups again, because a lot of businesses aren't going to be surviving this. There's going to be little holes, little niches of where startups can go in with a low overhead and survive. So that's the part for the business owner. The part for the investor that I advise is to really be careful and do your due diligence and have a professional look it over with you. So in other words, if a person's investing in a business, regardless of what it was, and they show them financials. They said, this was our financial last year. We earned this amount, and this is what our net profit was, and this is what our projections were. We have to look at when these projections were done and when the net profit was. Because if this was the end of 2019, and that's what most people are using right now, right. that's all changed. So we have to look at it carefully and see, when are they using these things? What are they factoring into it? And even if they're giving us current projections, what's the reality to it? Somebody looking to raise money might be totally straightforward and give all the pros and the cons. Other people may just make it a very rosy picture. What we do for our investor clients is look at the project they're going into and we do a full due diligence to see what they should be investing in and if it's worth it or how much it is worth. All right, Richard Lipton, thank you for your time. Thank you. Free professional advice from Richard Lipton of Richard Lipton CPA and Associates. We'll talk to you soon and look forward to hearing more advice from you, Richard. Very good. Thank you.